winter on its way. She needs warm woolen mittens and wool socks and a scarf. But Madeleine, you'll have to knit them for yourself. I don't know how to knit. I will teach you, little one. I will teach you. Madame Barbier, how long do you think it would take to make all these clothes? Oh, that's hard to say, Père Antoine. Hard to say. It could take quite a while. It could take till the end of the war. December 7th, went to war with the little Barbier. Why? How do you know all this? The conduct is particular. Now you will answer my question. Why did you move out of the Queen when our soldiers took over? What are you hiding? <laughs> hiding? You really don't understand. 
I warn you, Fraulein, to laugh at a German officer. The results may not be so far. Surely in your country people laugh, Monsieur? Everton Schmidt. We do laugh, Fraulein. Personally, I like a good time. But you should never laugh at an officer. I'm not laughing at you, Herr Lieutenant Schmidt. No. Of course not. But it's clear you don't know the hot war section of Auvergne. You ask me what I'm hiding, look out the window. Snow? Again? Yes, Herr Lieutenant Schmidt. Again and again and again, from November until May. And when the winds start, some of the roads become impassable. That is why, when winter comes, I board in the village. From the looks of that sky, I suggest you leave at once. The snow here falls fast. I will return, Fraulein. You will have a... your books, your lessons, and exams ready for inspection. When will that be? Soon, Fraulein. Very soon. I sincerely hope you will knock next time you come, Herr Lieutenant Schmidt. And not surprise a lady. You're young, spirited. I like that. If you cooperate, I will see to it that you will have a real school to teach in, in our new world. I have a school to teach in, in this world. This? This is nothing, a village schoolhouse filled with French peasants. Then why waste your time here? We will see each other again, Frog. But next time, I will knock first. and wait for the Allies to rescue us. We can't wait. The Allies are still all the way in North Africa. And we are here. We have to fight here, on our own soil, for our own country. What do you mean? A French underground? <coughs> here in Auvergne, Saint-Vidal, the Marquis will be born. We want this schoolhouse for a meeting. It's yours. We need secrecy. We need success, Monsieur de la Cour. The French are like puppets, ignoring atrocities, obeying absurdities. It has to stop. <sighs> Suzanne, <laughs> you are the spirit the Marquis needs. Tell me, what can I do? Leave the door open. That's all? For now. The Marquis meets here tonight. Tomorrow, we go into action. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I'll meet you at the cafe. Five o'clock. Five o'clock.
told you. I don't believe you. It's a crime to help a prisoner. All I did was mail a letter. What secret information was inside? It's a birthday card for his little girl. Idiots! Where would a prisoner get a birthday card? He made it from scraps. Again, where did you and the prisoner meet? I told you. I was on my way home from school, and he was sweeping the snow from the town hall steps. He just asked me if I'd mail this letter for him because he wasn't allowed to leave. So, you admit you spoke to him? Yes. That alone is a crime! Now, Madeline, you've been here for three hours. Aren't you getting tired? Yes. Then identify the prisoner! I'll let you go home, and if you're a good girl, I'll even give you some real chocolate. Chocolate? There's no chocolate in France anymore. I know that. Ah, you're wrong. Look. <laughs> Just walk over to the window and point to the man. That's all. That one or that one. I don't know. I can't tell. There are only five of them, and you spoke directly to him! Now which one was it? I don't remember. They all look the same. In prison clothes. Why did you break the law? I didn't know it was the law. I won't do it again. But anyway, for Lieutenant Schmidt, birthdays come only once a year. Just how old are you? Eleven. Eleven? I wouldn't have thought you could be so naive. This is a waste of time. Now, Madame Petit, never, never speak to strangers. I would have thought a young girl your age would know that by now. Why don't they teach you what's important at school? And if a prisoner ever tries to talk to you again, you will come and tell me at once. At once! Yes, sir, Lieutenant Schmidt. Talking to a prisoner is treason, punishable by death. Now, you don't want to be shot, do you? No, Lieutenant Schmidt. And you will never break the law again? Talking to you just like a father. Aren't I? Yes, you're Lieutenant Schmidt. So, when you go home, you will tell Frau Barbier and Fräulein Curie that you and I had a nice little visit this afternoon. And you learned an important lesson from Anne Lieutenant Schmidt. Now, run along. But, remember. I won't be so lenient next time.
slice of cake in two years. It tasted like real sugar. <laughs> it was. Real sugar? Madame Barbier, you never said that the sugar was coming. Why didn't you say something to me? I could have given you lots of help. <coughs> I didn't know. You didn't know? All the way from her saying you didn't know? That is, I, I found out just before. Family's family, you don't refuse. Anne-Marie's cousin, isn't she? Yes. She doesn't look a bit like Anne-Marie. Not a bit. No, she resembles the other side of the family, the Marseille side. Was that Warner? Yes, why? She doesn't have a Marseille accent? No. No. Her mother insisted on the best content schools, so she'd speak pure French. Thank you for bringing the cake, Madame Renault. It's the little things that make more time so difficult. Who'd have thought I'd miss sugar in my coffee so much? Who'd have thought the war would go on so long? There's plenty of sugar if you know where to go. Oh. Down in the town hall, they have it every day. The town hall? <coughs> hey, dear Madame Barbier, you don't think the Nazi officers pay attention to our rationing, do you? They have sugar and real chocolate and I suppose you heard about shooting in your No. Sucking in the news. You don't go out. My arthritis. Anyway, you got a shoe hiding in the Sierra Tour's barn. It's yet? Yes. What happened? Well, the Sierra Tour's barn, you didn't know anyone who was hiding there. No one believed that. So they shot them. And the dog. As an example. As an example. There was a reward of two. Six hundred francs. But El Lieutenant Schmidt said we should do our duty without a reward. Yes, if we can. I spoke right up, right from the crowd. Money always helps, I told him. He shot a tear. Can you imagine the danger for his neighbors? Yes. But I don't know why they shot a dog. Someone would have taken it in. Be careful crossing the road, Madame Renault. It may be June, but there's still patches of ice. <laughs> Suzanne! Madeleine! Coming! I thought she wouldn't leave in time. Madeleine, stand by the window. If you see someone, warn us. All right. Good evening. This is the British Broadcasting Corporation. Key points in the German defense line in Italy have fallen. American troops have captured Valentri and Valmonton. Allied forces continue to push forward toward Rome. Madame Barbier, look. The Allies are here. The Nazis still hold Rome, but by tomorrow... Someone's coming! Turn off the radio. Hide everything. Uh -huh. <coughs> Where? In the stone. Quickly. Not when. Here. Excellent. I must make it a point to 
meet this man down here now. But someone has reported that you were listening to a foreign radio station. A radio? A foreign station? Why, you said yourself that was illegal. I know what I said. I will not sit at your table and then arrest you. Ah, you're not heartless, Herr Lieutenant Schmidt. But someone did report hearing English voices in this house. I always wanted the radio. The music would be such a comfort on a cold winter's night. But there was never enough francs. Explain that! Yes, of course. Madeline, shall we tell Herr Lieutenant Schmidt about our English lessons? Why is she so brave? Perhaps because of this. Don't you know young girls prefer sweets? Next time you come. I'll bring some. But I must check this report. Look for yourself. Please, 
I must really must. I want to rear use here. Reason our paper. The Makisar. They sent me down to write a story. <coughs> Condition since the French surrender. Suzanne. Are you all right? I'm fine. What's wrong? He needs to eat, not talk. No. I must talk. I must tell you. There's no food in our safe. Except the black market. I saw a woman take off her wedding band to buy a slice of bacon. There was a prison. Prison? I thought so, Suzanne. What happened? They're arresting all the Jews in Marseille. They're going house to house, alley to alley, hunting them down. And they're arresting anyone who hides them, anyone who gives them food, 